On Tuesday the 9th of October, Mary Awanis and her three passengers were driving through the streets of Baghdad. At that same moment, an armed convoy belonging to the Australian-run private security company, Unity Resources Group, was returning to its base. Mary's car was reportedly driving about 90 metres behind the convoy when the URG guards decided it was a security threat. They used flares and hand signals to warn Mary off, but when her car came closer, they fired over 40 shots towards it. Mary and her fellow passenger in the front seat were killed instantly. On Wednesday morning, nearly, nearly 24 hours later, my sister phoned from Baghdad and broke the news and I was absolutely beside myself. I just went. Paul Manuk is Mary's brother. He left Baghdad in 1974, but kept in close touch with his family in Iraq. Mary was the youngest of his three sisters. She was a very loving sister and her house was full of friends. Every time I phone, you know, people are visiting and, and so on. So it was just, really, that's her character, such a, a lovely character. Mary's husband died from heart failure in 2004 leaving her as the sole provider for their three young daughters. Mary was university educated with a degree in science, but in today's war-torn Iraq, there weren't many options for her to earn a living. My sister, everything fell suddenly on her to look after the children, and she learned to drive uh, within six months, I think. On Baghdad's dangerous streets, Mary started an unofficial taxi service to take the children of family and friends to university. She said that she will never go to areas where it is dangerous. She avoided that and also not only that, she only used the car where it's necessary, to the university back, to the church and back. Mary was an Armenian Christian. Her three daughters were at her funeral. Nora is 20, Karun 19, and the youngest, Elise, is 11 years old. Having now lost both their mother and father, their uncle, Paul, has become their official guardian. Paul's flown from the UK to the Jordanian capital, Amman, with his daughter Miriam. They've come to investigate Mary's death and see how to get the girls out of Iraq. You know, really my first thought was that we have to get the girls out. We have to, we can't leave them in a country where this could happen to their mother. They want to bring the girls back with them to the UK, but for now, Jordan is the best and most immediate option. They've lost their mum and they've been living in this country that's sort of steadily descending into just such horror that, you know, like in the past few weeks, I don't think they've been doing anything other than just staying in the house, you know. Since the war began, over two million Iraqis have fled to neighbouring countries. But Jordan and Syria have now tightened their borders, and it's become increasingly difficult for people to escape Iraq. Yeah. So to, oh, no, is tonight is good. It's just like well, we uh, need to make sure that there's a short period when he can meet with this Armenian. Paul and Miriam hit the phones to see who can help. Yeah, routine, love, routine. 
Yeah. With no official government or agency support, they're relying on unofficial channels to rescue their orphaned nieces. <laughs> I spoke to Tamara mm -hmm. about the tickets, like, should we, you know, can we buy them here for them? What do we, she said Faisal will buy them. As soon as they've got, like, the visa, right. Faisal That's would buy their tickets. So we need to tell... The hope was for the girls to come to Jordan while Paul and Miriam were still here. But arranging visas and passports is taking longer than hoped. No, something not right. Paul calls the family in Baghdad. Ich bin sick. Ja, pack dir euch, du ich bin sick. Ja. Ich kann ich bin sick, ich bin sick tuk. Ja, love ich bin sick tuk. Ja. Nein, das ist mein Kosa, mein Kosa sing mal tot hede. Ihr gesehnt ihr je vor tuchtere elaf schudo melek, tschüss pasek, ihr pek. Paul and Miriam believe they may have a civil case against Unity Resources Group. They could have done entirely differently. They could have shot the tires, disabled it uh, from a distance if they were suspected of it. So they could have shot a bit more in the air just to warn. I was told that there is about 40 bullets being held at on them and 19 gone into my sister's body and obviously from waist up like I don't know what, what went into the mind of the person that you will hail bullets of 40 bullets completely as if they are nothing as if they have no value According to witnesses, after opening fire on Mary and her passengers, the URG guards left without offering any assistance. All the accounts that we have are simply that my aunt was shot and the contractors left, virtually, you know, in a blaze of dust. Unity Resources was founded in 2000 by Australian Gordon Conroy, a former SAS commander. Over half of the company's 160 staff are said to be Australians or New Zealanders. Its yearly turnover is reported to exceed $50 million. This is not the first time they have made the headlines. In March last year, URG guard shot dead a 72-year-old professor and Australian resident, Kays Juma. Paul believes the Australian government has a responsibility to monitor the kinds of operations its citizens set up abroad. Because it has a, a, an Australian origin, yes, registered in, Sing in Singapore, yes, uh, headquarters in Dubai. You can see the international scene of it. It's a global system. And so therefore the, the Australian government has a responsibility. There is a moral case for it to monitor and to uphold the law. I've come to the Arab Emirates to see if I can get any answers about Mary's death. Unity Resources, like many private security companies in Iraq, has its headquarters here in Dubai. Oh hi, is Michael Pridden there please? Michael Pridden is an executive with the group. Sure, it's Sophie McNeil from Dateline, SBS TV Australia. URG has expressed regret over the incident, but they've refused to answer any questions we asked about the attack. I've been trying to talk to URG management for weeks, but they haven't returned my calls and have refused our request for an interview. Hi, um, excuse me. Hello. Yes. Hi, I'm just wondering, is, can I please speak with Mr. Pridden? Is he available? No, I'm sorry, we're not uh, doing any media interviews. Just a few minutes of your time. So many shots to be fired at one car, driven by 
a woman with a woman in the passenger, another woman in the passenger seat, seems um, uh, very, very excessive. Richard Galustian lived in Baghdad for three years, running his own private security company. That's where he met Australian Gordon Conroy, who set up Unity Resources Group. They had a pretty good reputation, nothing controversial, relatively low key, um, and uh, run by Australian management. Richard says that in the world of private security in Iraq, there are essentially no real checks and balances. There's a feeling of lawlessness, that feeling of being in a Mad Max movie. So there's uh, essentially a sort of a lawless cowboy uh, uh, philosophy amongst some of the people in private security. Richard Galustian believes that the deaths of civilians at the hands of private security contractors is vastly underreported. Two incidences that have got all of this publicity, the Blackwater incident and the URG incident, are just two of something that's been a symptom right from the beginning. Um, it's just that the, the, the media hasn't reported it because there's been so much general carnage. People who were involved in incidents, whether they shot somebody, wounded them or killed them, uh, felt that they were immune. They, they wouldn't, wouldn't be prosecuted and they weren't and they haven't. So as someone who works in the industry, this is something that you used to see all the time, but it just went unreported? Yes. Back in Amman, Jordan, Miriam has received copies of her cousin's passports by email. She's hopeful they'll be able to get their visas to Jordan soon. This is Nora, my eldest, the eldest of Mary's daughters, so she's my cousin. Um, she's 20. Iraqi police have told Dateline that they're continuing to investigate the incident. But because private security firms are immune from prosecution in Iraq, it is unlikely that the men who killed Mary Awanis will face any criminal charges. Miriam and Paul want people to realise that behind every death in Iraq, there is a family and a story. And the stories you hear about, you know, an Iraqi civilian, it's... They're people like you or I. They've got families who are real and... They've got lives and... They've all got hopes and dreams, and it, you just feel that Iraq is not a country in which to live your life. <laughs>